Yo, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Premps. And in today's video, we're gonna talk Luffy, Shanks, and the infamous fruit, the Gomu Gomu no Mi. A fruit so special that it was sought by the world government. And I mean, in order for Shanks to even get this fruit, he actually had to take it from the world government. And of course, this was with the help of his crew. And we're gonna find out why that exactly was in this video. But before I get started, if you're returning to the channel, and haven't already then why haven't you subscribed yet and of course if you're new here then feel free to hit that red button and join the gang and for the rest of you in fact for all of you if you do like anything i have to say in this video then make sure you like the video for the algorithm of course but now let's get into it and i think the only way to start this off is to take a look at Luffy's devil fruit, the Gomu Gomu no Mi. And this is a Paramecia devil fruit that gives the user's body the properties of rubber, essentially making the user a rubber man, or should I say a rubber human, depending if you're male or female. Because you know, I'm all here for inclusion and that, you know, equal opportunity, now I'm playing. Now this fruit was essentially seen as a treasure and was heavily guarded by the world government until it was stolen by Shanks and his crew. And you know, once this fruit was stolen, it was accidentally eaten by our protagonist a young monkey d luffy now there's a million questions that basically popped up in my mind a few months ago because we all found out that who's who who is a member of the toby ropo in the yonko kaido's crew was the one that was actually guarding this fruit and ultimately losing this fruit to shanks was the demise of his time as an agent in cp9 and ultimately who's who had to seek refuge within the yonko's crew but back to the gomu gomu no mi because from the first look and viewing i think we can all agree that Luffy's devil fruit doesn't seem you know very special at all but following Luffy's journey so far we've seen him pushing his limits and using it in the most unique ways possible if we look at Luffy pre-time skip every step of the way we learn more and more unique things about his devil fruit I always remember my sort of reaction when we were in Arlong Park and even though we learned that the devil fruit users are weakened by the sea we still saw that he didn't actually lose his devil fruit ability his head was still able to stretch out of the water. You see, pre-time skip, before the revelation of Haki, Luffy was low-key kind of broken because even though you could attack him, his pain threshold was literally ridiculous. And this was because, of course, he was a rubber man. We saw him jump headfirst into cannonballs and bullets and literally would just absorb them into his body and shoot them right back where they came from. That is an ability that not many individuals have the luxury of having. However, if we fast forward over time, we've seen Luffy go through all his gears. We had gear 2 which was first seen on Eni's lobby, where he was able to increase his blood flow in order to mimic the Roko Shiki techniques we saw from the CP9 members. He was able to increase both his speed and his power. We also saw gear 3, which I believe was also on Eni's lobby. And this is where Luffy effectively just blows air into his body, allowing his bones to inflate, increasing his strength, or should I say his damage output. And then we have Gear 4, which Luffy worked on during the two year time skip. And this was first shown to us in Dressrosa in the form of Bound Man. And this literally increased Luffy's strength and speed to more than we had seen before. But also his body was coated in Haki and was absolutely ridiculous. But we've also learned that there are three forms to it as it stands. As there's Tank Man, which increases his defense, and Snake Man, which effectively increases his speed. And I guess what I'm trying to emphasize here is the uniqueness of Luffy's ability, particularly when within these transformations, he's using moves like Red Hawk in order to create fire, and then just being a difficult matchup to other overpowered fruits like a Nell's electricity. So after seeing all of this and things I've touched on so far, why is it that the Navy wanted this fruit? With all the devil fruits out there, why is it that Shanks and his crew made it a necessity to go and steal this fruit? And what is even more interesting is that Shanks is someone we've seen hold a lot of clout. We've seen it at Marineford and then to be able to show up and have a meeting with the Gorosei unannounced and yet steal the fruit that maybe, just maybe, they potentially wanted. There's been loads of theories particularly in the beginning of One Piece, such as who had the Gomu Gomu no Mi before Luffy. Was it Goldie Roger? However, with the information we have now, I think we can pretty much confirm that Roger did not have this devil fruit. But what about if he learned something about it in Raftel? Maybe that could be the answer. What if Roger asked Shanks to go and find and guard this fruit? This fruit might just be the key to many, many things in the One Piece world. 
However, I'm not so sure this to be the case. You see, one thing I've always thought of is that if Roger had this devil fruit, surely someone would have recognised that by now. Even Whitebeard when he met Luffy in Marineford. And I'm also, I'm not so sure how I'd feel about Luffy accidentally getting the most important and crucial devil fruit just by chance. But maybe I'm wrong and Luffy has got an OP devil fruit, you know, Will of D and all of that. But I'm still going to be pretty adamant that this is not a fruit that Roger ate. But what about Joy Boy? We know that Roger couldn't read the Poneglyphs, but he had the voice of all things and therefore was able to basically hear what the Poneglyphs were saying. What if Joy Boy revealed his own devil fruit within these Poneglyphs? And that fruit itself does have a property that allows one to do what needs to be done. You see, one of the things I've learned so far in One Piece is that things are rarely what they see. And even when they are, it's part of a wider picture. So what if Joy Boy, who like Toki is from the Void Century, knew something that we didn't? What if he was from the family of Ds that maybe grew these devil fruits somehow? And when these Ds were erased from history by the celestial dragons, Joy Boy had the knowledge of what we may find to learn to be the first devil fruit known as the Gomu Gomu no Mi. One thing I have to mention is something that Dofi mentioned when talking about Pangea Castle and that a national treasure that could shake up the world being located there. Well, what about if this is the tree of life or devil fruit tree is located there? You know, the one that birthed the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Don't you guys and girls think it's strange how the Navy always have these OP devil fruits just to give to their admirals? You see, there's a lot I want to talk about in this video, but I'll definitely do a follow-up video at a later point because I think the real secret of this fruit is the ability once Luffy awakens this fruit. One thing that was highlighted at Marineford was Whitebeard's fruit and the ability to destroy the world. And it just so happens that this fruit is now in the hands of Blackbeard, who himself is a member of the D-Clan known as Marshall D. Teach. Can we imagine what the awakening for the Guru Guru no Mi is going to be like. Well, whilst holding that thought, I believe Luffy's awakening is going to be the polar opposite and not the power to destroy the world, but the power to save the world. And that's what the true power of his fruit is. I believe that Luffy upon me and Shanks will learn this and he'll have to learn how to awaken his devil fruit. Now, how he does this, I have no idea. But one thing I can say is that I think we can get some information on this in the new One Piece film Red. I think we'll get a deeper insight and maybe a prequel on things that happen with Shanks including his battles with Mihawk but also how he holds so much clout and why he knows so much. But let me know what you all think. I've always been on the side of Devil Fruits just you know just being there but it feels like we're going down a path of a deeper and underlying secret and Oda has definitely foreshadowed this to us on one or many occasions. But let me know what you all think. Do you think that Luffy's devil fruit has a unique property that's going to be the key to the end game? Let me know down in the comments. And as usual, if you like anything I've had to say, then please make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you like content like this, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit bell notifications so you never miss out when I drop more content just like this. Say.